Keeping a running total is a really common operation that we're going to need when we create games. You might not think that keeping a running total of things is something that you would need, but it happens so often in my class I find I often refer people back to this part of the text and say, oh, we need to go back here in order to figure out how to keep a running total. I'm sure you will remember how to keep a running total, but the person next to you might not keep know how to keep a running total. I would recommend bookmarking this spot and when they ask you a question you can point them to this video so that you don't have to bother explaining again how to keep a running total. So the code to make a running total is pretty straightforward and it looks something like the following. There are, th and there are basically three main parts to it. The first part is to create a variable that will hold the total. In this case, I've called the variable total. You could name it something else, but you need to create that initial variable and set it to zero. This holds the sum of whatever it is that we're trying to total up. So this is step one. Step two, right here, is to actually loop for each item that we want to total. And the third step is really here, and for the third step is to actually add the new item. Now, it is not unusual for somebody to forget this step, but if you forget this step, this step will fail. And why will it fail? Let's take a look. We've got total plus equals new number. And what does that plus equals remember? If you do remember, and of course you do, total equals total plus new number. These lines right here are equivalent. So let's just go with the second line um, because it'll help us step along. The way this works is the computer is going to look at this and try to evaluate it. The first time through this for loop, if you don't set total equal to zero, you're saying to the computer, total is equal to total plus the new number. And if the new number happened to be 34, the computer will make 34 and it'll substitute whatever it knows for total, but you've never told it what total is. It'll get confused and it'll fail. So it is necessary to set total equal to zero. If you set total equal to zero, then the computer will go total equals zero plus 34 or total equals 34. Then the next time through the loop, the computer will go total equals 34 plus whatever the user enters, which might be 16. So total equals 34 plus 16, or in other words, equal to 50. So let's go ahead and run this. 34, and let's do 16, plus maybe a one, two, and our fifth number, we'll do three. The total is 56. This is how we keep a running total. Now we might not always keep a running total of what the user enters. We might have a different program. This program loops from one to 100, inclusive. We remember that from our for loop. We start sum at zero and we add whatever i is equal to to what we had before. So to start with, we're gonna have one plus Next time through the loop, two, plus. Next time through the loop, three, plus. Next time through the loop is four. We're basically finding out what the total of each number is from one to 100, if you were to add them all together. Now, this might seem like it would take you a little bit to do in your head, but just as a little trick, you could actually do this totaling in your head and sum up all 100 numbers fairly quickly if you think about it this way. We've got 100 all the way down to 1. If you add these together, it is 101. And if you add 2 plus 99, what's the answer? 101. And you have a total of how many of these? 
50. So 50 times 101 will give you 5,000. 50. So you can actually do that in your head pretty quick, but we're going to go ahead and make the computer do it the hard way. So if I go ahead and run this, I see indeed the computer totals it up and it has run through that loop 100 times, added each of those 100 numbers and give us, given us a total of 5,050. It is also possible to count the number of times something occurs. This happens a lot in gameplay, for instance, you want to count how many times users clicked the button to count down for the number of bullets they fired. It, any type of time that you want to count how many times something happens, you're still doing a running total. This example shows how much to count that, and to do this, I've got an if statement in here. I've still set the total equal to zero. I've still got a loop, but I only add one if a particular condition holds. In this case, if what they entered is equal to zero, I'm going to add one. Otherwise, I'm going to ignore it. So if they never enter a zero, that if statement will never trip, and I will get a print statement of you entered a total of zero zeros. Enter a number. See, you entered a total of zero zeros. And if I run this again, you entered a total of two zeros. That works pretty well. And it is a way of using keeping a running total to keep track of how many times things happened.